The Wallabies travelled to France in late 1971 under new coach 39-year-old Bob Templeton. Teenager Russell Fairfax was selected at fly half for the first of his eight tests, while David's Lestrange and Dunworth were the other newcomers. Housed in primitive conditions at a disused mental asylum, manager Joe French threatened to take the side home before playing in the first test. The French had seven players in the side for the first test that had taken part in the Wallabies' one-point victory in Sydney in 1968, including their goal-kicking fullback, Pierre Villepreau. Add, adding to the, uh, to the woes that we had, I, I guess that uh, 15 of the 25 players were new. And, uh, and, and it takes a little bit of uh, getting used to the, 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 the life of a rugby player on tour. Um, but these, uh, these guys uh, you know, blended together well. I mean, I think the amateurism of the sport lent itself to that. I was a youngster and there was plenty of senior guys on the tour and you always look towards the senior guys. Uh, in those days, they were fairly serious sort of characters, always strong, always tough, always said what they meant and looked you in the eye when they said it. So I knew my place. I sat back and was prepared to be the number one or the number two fullback and the backup 5'8 on the test tour. It's certainly different touring, touring uh, France. You feel a little bit isolated because you can't speak the language, but you, you tend to draw very closely together within the team, team unit. Uh, and I think uh, at that particular stage, French rugby wasn't terribly kind to of people who laid on the ground or sort of, uh, you know, they were fairly violent in a lot of things that they did. The Australians running into the sun and the wind in the first half, a crowd here in very cold conditions of about 15,000. French team playing in the white jerseys and dark shorts. Sester coming through the middle, Sester down to the 25, looking for support. Back to the breakaway Squilla, and Squilla handing it over to Dauger, and Dauger... Well, the ball over the line, but the referee has recalled play that was Sester going through the giant second rower. But one of those passes were forward, and it sets a set scrum just inside the Australian 25. France looking very good here. Back to McGill. McGill, and it's a rebound. It's over the line. Spell are going for the ball. It's a try. Try to France. The breakaway forward. And look there, the score, four points to nil. The try in this match for the first time, counting as four points instead of three. Here's the replay. McGill can't get his kick away. Squale charging the kick down. An easy run to the line. The bounce was a good one to suit the French player. And it's 4-0 France in front. And here's Ville Preur to take the conversion. Ville Preur, an unusual kicker. He walks back, then two distinct side paces and a smaller one, kicking the ball off his instep. Ville Preur back on the 25. And it's just wide of the upright, wide of the right-hand upright. So France leads Australia by four points to nil after seven minutes of play. Tight head to Australia to Fairfax. And Fairfax, the high one, they're pouring through on this one as Dibertrain goes back in defence. And where's the ball? It's in touch on the full. So right back for Australia. And a fight here between the forwards. That's Dunworth for Australia. And Irakabal, the Frenchman, Dunworth number one, crosses there too. And there's... Irakabal coming in with his boot and Dunworth throwing punches. Sullivan's there too. A wild melee amongst the forwards. And referee Lewis trying to get on control here. And referee Lewis calling players out. But the initial flare-up was between the two front rowers. The fiery Queensland player, Dave Dunworth, and the French Frenchman, Irakabal. Now, caution being handed out to all teams. That's what's, let's see what the referee's decision is here. But it's play on with the line out on the far side. Hipwell again caught on his own 25. But apparently reeled a knock on from the line out and back for a set scrum. Which would give the Australians the loose head and look at those front row forwards crashing down. Crosser, Johnson and Dunworth for Australia. Irakabal, Yapvili and Azariti for France. The Australians coming away from the line but across to the winger on the far side. Here's the cross kick from Deepo Tran. It's inside the 25. But the ball taken into touch by Fairfax, the long-haired 5'8", number 10, it was in touch on the full. So back again outside the 25. Butler for Australia. And halfback Hipwell. Yes, just finding touch up to halfway, and that saves the situation for Australia. 
Only one score in the match so far, the try by Squilla, the French breakaway, to make it France 4, Australia 0. Good ball for Australia, Fairfax to Shaw, and Shaw tried to charge through the middle, he look, looking for a quick heel by the Australians, out of Lestrange, on this wing is, is McLean, and McLean coming across to this side, he's tackled by Bertrand, and Bertrand seems to be flattened by the tackle, Bertrand knocked himself out making that tackle, and the French winger is down. But back on his feet, Bertrand, throw into the back of the line. Out to Berro. Angle kick across field, back inside his own 25 as McGill in great position. McGill coming up over the 25, sends a pass back to Cole, and that's not a good pass, and Cole in trouble, but he gets out of it. And the ball in touch on the full, Australia again losing ground with a line out about five yards or so outside the Australian 25. The Frenchman using the short line out. Players all lined up, but no ball there yet. Just waiting for De Bertrand, the French winger, to come into position. Spung Hero standing up there with Sesta. Spung Hero four and Sesta five and Dauga eight. The three big French line out forwards. But here's a penalty, it appears. Yes, a penalty against the Australian backs, probably Fairfax or Shaw, coming up inside the ten yards. And an easy shot for Veal Pro. Field Pro attempting this one from the 25. Just watch these two long side passes and the little short one. Great chance for it to add to the French score. He's missed it. No change in score. It's still 4 0 France in front. Not out charge down now. Was strange trying to come away, but the ball obviously not going over the 25 yard line. The Australians have the option, or France has the option of the second kick or the scrum. They're going to take the second kick, and here's McGill's dropout. And that's Dunworth coming in, and Dunworth obviously must be penalised this time. That was coming in with a straight left, and it's a penalty to France, and it's right in front. Dunworth, a Brisbane player, very fiery footballer. And he was involved earlier in that exchange with Irakabal. But here's Vilpro this time, and let's see this one. It's right over the black spot. There's no black spot there, but it would be if there was, and that's the score. France 7, Australia 0. Vilpro kicking the penalty goal to follow on the earlier try by the breakaway forward, Squela. 7-0 after 26 minutes of play. And this time, another penalty to France. It's not in kicking distance. It's well inside the French half, and Vilpro will come up from fullback to take the kick. And finding touch, eight yards or so, inside the French half. So far in this first half, the French team looking a far better attacking side. The ball hasn't really got right across the Australian back line. Cole throw in for Australia. Biero along the back line. And there might be a knock on there, but the advantage rule being played. Now the referee's whistle will stop play here again. Back to Fairfax. Fairfax angle kick down towards the 25, but once again from Fairfax, his kick going in touch on the full. just on the French 25. Here's Berro, the 5'8", along the back line to Lux, to Trio. That's fullback Vilpro in the movement. Bertrand on the swing. Bertrand cutting, cutting back in field. Bertrand going across field. Now, where's his back line? He's linking up with Lux again. Lux has Trio with him. That's Trio, the outside centre. Di Bertrand on the far wing, and Di Bertrand cutting inside. Players going down almost to the 25. The forwards are coming in here fast. Sesters there with Spung Hero. That's Spung Hero going down inside the 25. A great performance by the French team here. They're looking for the quick hill. Here it comes to Berro, the 5'8". Berro going through a gap. Out to Lux. Fullback. Yes, Jack, the fullback's in. Magnificent play, Bertrand. Bertrand goes for the corner. Great try to France. 
France to a lead of 11 points nil. And let's watch the action replay of this magnificent footballing movement. The whole back line with the fullback coming in. Villepreux sending his pass to winger Bertrand. Bertrand cutting back infield to link up with his back line on the other side. That's Lux. Lux has Trio and Di Bertrand with him. That's Di Bertrand on the wing now. He goes down inside the 25, cutting inside two tackles. Look at the forwards there. Sesta number five. And the big fellow Dark is there with number four, Spang Hiro. They form the ruck, a beautiful ruck. The ball comes quickly. And right across the fullback line it comes. That's Bero. He cuts out what one man's cut out here with a pass. That's a fullback coming in. And the fullback adds the thrust for the winger to go over in the corner. A really magnificent try. It wasn't converted, so France leads by 11 points to nil after 38 minutes in the first half. So coming up now to injury time, Australia looking no hope at all here. But there's a knock-on giving Australia a chance as Davis comes through fast. It's inside the 25. And France back on their heels for the first time, really, in this first half. Any moment now, the referees whistle for half-time. Australia down 11 points to nil and not looking any proposition at all at this stage. Flames throw in. That's the hooker, Yak Vili, driving through at the front of line out. Sester in support there, number five. Out it comes to Bayreo. Bayreo caught by Fairfax to Lestrange. Lestrange is over in front of the post. An easy try. He's right in. To the simplest of try. A terrible mistake by the Frenchman. France 11, Australia 4. Let's watch that again in action replay. The Frenchman in full control, it seems, but here's a terrible blunder by the French 5'8", Barreau, to give Australia a great chance. I don't know how the guy didn't get carted Barreau, off with a broken jaw, but I, I made a fairly good connection with a swinging right arm, hit him high, he spilt the football. David Lestrange, another rookie in the side, a Queensland centre, nicknamed the Lizard, picked it up and scooted about 25 metres and we were back in the ball game. And I thought to myself, this can't be the national rugby. This is a game played by gentlemen. An easy conversion for McGill and a great chance for Australia to come back into the game. And there it is, two more points to Australia. So at half time, it's France 11, Australia 6. Moving into the second half, the Australians running with the wind and the sun behind them. So they're at least a chance now after those six points, a luxury six points coming to them in the closing moments of the first half. And the long driving kick with the wind looks at the effect of the wind this time. That's going right down to the far end of the field. Over the goal line and back there in defence is Spung Hero, the second row forward, touching down for the 25 dropout. Bero to take the kick. And the scrum to pack down. Just outside the French 25. Getting towards midfield, a good chance for Australia to open up on both sides of the field. There's Fairfax out here to his winger McLean, and there's the fullback McGill in the movement. But the last pass apparently has been ruled forward. Let's see the referee's whistle. They would come back for a set scrum. Typical Australian attacking move, bringing the fullback up as the extra man on the blind side. And Johnson's won the scrum against the head. A great chance for Australia. Coming into the back line, there's Cole making the extra man. Cole's through the gap. He has support outside him. Cole goes down to the fullback. A pass for Lestrange, and Lestrange is over for his second try. Australia one point behind. France 11, Australia 10. A great effort there, particularly by the hooker, Peter Johnson, winning that scrum against the head. And here's the action replay. Great movement here by Cole, who comes in fast and late outside centre shore. Clean through the gap. He has double support outside. A good pass for Lestrange. And Lestrange over, even though his other winger was there in support with him, McLean. And David Lestrange, two tries in his first match for Australia. And here's the all-important attempted conversion by McGill. If successful here, Australia will hit the front for the first time in the match. And it's in the air, it's just wide of the upright, so the French, French team stays in front, it's 11-10, but still 27 minutes to go. Now Fairfax to Shaw, and Shaw the long kick over the 25, it's bouncing towards the line, it's still going, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's in touch, about two yards from the corner, and Australia right on the attack.
Well, the Australians, as we said, starting off with no hope as a, at the opening of this game, and now they're right in it. They could win. They look no chance up till the 41st minute of play. An injury time in the first half when those six points were given to them, a converted try, and now they're back in the game, 11 points to 10, one point the difference. Penalty to France, right on their own try line, only about three or four yards out. Ville Perreur taking the kick. And a long one against the wind, taking it right up to the Austria or the French 10 yard line. Again then of just over 40 yards. The ball rolling back from the line out and a penalty here apparently and here's a chance for Australia. Captain Daga gesticulating to the referee Lewis but it's a penalty Australia and what's going to happen here a change of kicker. Yes, a change of kick, and McLean is going to take the kick. Jeff McLean, the Queensland winger, the fourth member of the McLean footballing family to play for Australia. His uncle Bill, very famous as the captain of the great 1947-48 Wallabies. And here the onus of responsibility on this young player, with Australia trailing by one point. Success here would put Australia in front for the first time in the match. As you see, he's right on the 10-yard line, about 15 yards in from touch. It's a 45-yard shot, and he has the wind with him. McLean, a left foot kick. This time for Australia, all or nothing, great chance. Oh, came off his boot. Well, it's a good kick. It's all the way. Australia in front by 13 points to 11. And the goal scorer was Jeff McLean. Now the French pouring in. They're behind for the first time. That's Pibert, the halfback. His kick coming down inside the 25, but in touch on the full, and back we go to halfway. The French expected to pull out all stops here, Australia. Uh, fairly good in defence, particularly in the back line. There's Barrow along to looks to Trio, and the movement not as good as seems to be lacking in pace by the, by the Frenchman. Here's a breakaway by McLean on the far side, but intercepted by Bertrand. Australian forwards across there very quickly indeed. In fact, they had their whole pack there and half the French men were still lagging. So the Australians showing out in good condition here. Tap penalty, but still a further 10 yards against the Australians as Dauka comes away. Herbert, the halfback, across to his forwards. Well, that's Trio back into the forwards now and down uh, to about 10 yards of the Australian 25. French team not the same zest in their attack. Now Herbert along the back line to Berreau, a long pass out this side to De Bertrand. But well tackled down goes looks and a violent tackle by Davis and there's players crashing in here. There's a fight breaking out. Barrow has come in and flattened Davis. Davis, the Australian captain's on the ground. Dunworth throwing punches and so too is a rucker ball. There's a clash of players everywhere. A wild melee. They're all in this. The whole two teams are fighting each other. A great clash here. There's the hooker Yuck Vili. Dunworth has been hit from behind. And Davis is on the ground. Lux is on the ground. Dunworth is injured. And the referee blowing his whistle. There's Greg Davis, the Australian captain. Seeing Greg Davis, he's now sort of bent to one side, almost touching his cheek in blood, but not shedding a tear, showing just how tough he was. That was what turned it for us. You know, and you looked at each, the rest of the players, you looked at each other and you thought, gee, you know, if he's going to do that, there's nothing I can't do. We grew, we grew an extra arm, an extra leg, an extra heart, you name it, we did it. And from that moment on, after Greg Davis had been hit, and, you know, hit very well, it was Australia coming to the fore. You know, we, we became the Anzacs in, on French soil and uh, the rest is history. The Australians leading in this match by 13 points to 11. It's getting close to the end now. Trying to break through is Bimaroe, the breakaway forward. Now his halfback, the halfback, Pebeau, getting through inside the 25. The French going for the corner. Looks goes for the corner. A beautiful diving tackle. And it's over the sideline and almost a French try in the closing moments of play. Referee Lewis looking at his watch there. The Australians, two points in front, hanging on desperately inside their own 25. Back to fullback McGill, and McGill finding touch, I'd say it's outside the 25. Yes, in touch, and that's the end of the match. And Australia has scored a magnificent win. I thought it was probably, uh, for them, a bit of, a, a, bit of a, um, a walk in the Mediterranean, so to speak. They thought it was going to be a reasonably easy match. Um, and I think we caught them on the hop. The... Um, 
the fact that we did have uh, some young players, uh, Dave, uh, Russell Fairfax had come into um, into 5'8", Arthur McGill is uh, dependable at fullback, um, David Lestrain I think caught, scored a couple of tries on that day. Um, so there was a, a couple of players there that hadn't gone to South Africa in 69 that had come on the scene and um, and they played very well. And that was David Lestrange's uh, first test match and he, he got the daily double up, he got scored two tries and at that stage of the game I think it was about my fifth or sixth and I still hadn't got one up so I was pretty jealous of him. Being the first side to take a test off the French since 1928 was something special. We thought it was something special and so did the French because from then on we got treated like a football team. I remember our next port of call was uh, was down on the Mediterranean and instead of the three star, one star hotels, we were in you know, something very special. A home that used to belong to Jules Verne and it was uh, some sort of a home being converted into a hotel and it had a lot of character. Uh, we then went up to Paris and again treated like royalty. You name it, we did it and all at the expense of the French at the expense of the French rugby. The Palace of Versailles, the Louvre, the perfume houses, you name it. Things that make fr France and and Paris a special part of this world, we were allowed to do as we pleased. We went on to all those sorts of things. It, it, it was great. Maybe it lulled us into a false sense of security because whilst we were enjoying ourselves, I think the French were building up for battle.